You're listening to TF Talk Weekly, part of the TF Talk network of podcasts and live streams, where we give you the most relevant current stories in your fandom and more, all within 30 quick minutes or less. I'm your host, Mr. Starscream, and I'll be your guide to everything worth talking about that transformed since last episode. Discover more of our great shows at tftalk.net. Finally, the dust has settled since TFCon DC, and I'm back with a new episode of TF Talk Weekly. If you were happy for the respite, then I take pleasure in letting you know that we're back. If you missed the show, sorry to keep you waiting. First off, I want to congratulate some lucky listeners that wrote into podcast at tfylp.com from our little contest in the last episode. Listener Wayne H. was the first to write in with subject line, Mr. Starscream Rules, and added, because of course he does. Well, that just warms my circuits, Wayne, and you'll be receiving a special treat in the mail, courtesy of yours truly. Other participants include Catherine, who told us to keep up the good work. Thanks, Catherine. We'll keep doing our best and try to make sure we crank out a show every week as intended. And of course, cast member Rob Simmons wrote in to let me know that Mr. Starscream drools, not rules. Ouch. Twist the knife, why don't you? Anyway, thank you to everyone that wrote in, and if you have anything you'd like to hear read on the show, feel free to email us at podcast at tfylp.com, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. A lot has happened since we last checked into Transformer Land here at TF Talk Weekly, so let's get to it before all this information becomes obsolete. Here's the latest on Toy Reveals. The first reveals we are tackling today are sourced from Japanese Cyberverse cell sheets. After being told that the Cyberverse Deluxe class would include parts for a -a Build-A-Figure Macadam amongst eight separate toys, the remaining four toys were still under wraps. We have Takara Tomy to thank for revealing at least two more of these Deluxe class figures, which include Grimlock and Rodimus. In addition to the Deluxes, a bombshell in the form of the first-ever Rack and Ruin mainline figure was dropped. The previously untransforming Wrecker is finally seeing his day as an Ultra class figure, opposite the previously revealed Clobber. So will this be enough to get collectors into the Cyberverse line after a whole year of naysaying? So I'm excited that he's getting an official toy. I wish it wasn't Cyberverse, which is not a great line, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. And if this starts introducing him to the toy line to where he can become more mainstream and maybe one day get something in the Generations line, that'll be awesome. If you're an avid Transformers collectible card game player, then you won't want to miss out on the upcoming Energon edition, which pays homage to the game's first year of cards. Each character card will be printed on special semi-transparent plastic and has unique art and markings designating these cards as part of the Energon edition. This set includes some of the most sought-after year one character cards like Nemesis Prime, Dark Clone, and Bumblebee, Legendary Warrior. The set also includes 30 Wave 1 booster packs and a variety of dice and unique packaging. The set isn't for the faint of heart though, at $199, and will be available starting December 2nd while supplies last on wizards.com. Studio Series completionists got a punch in the face as the elusive item number 48 was finally revealed. The previously announced Leader Class Megatron made for Universal Studios has gotten its own unique number designation and will only be available at the theme park stores. Wah, wah. At long last, the doctor is in. We can finally announce that Ratchet is on the shelf. I have not actually found any Ratchets back in Kansas City, but I have not been looking for them because on the way down to TFCon, I actually, it was it was kind of a game that I was playing with another buddy of mine where, where we were a few hours ahead of them and uh, we were stopping in at like every Walgreens and trying to clean them out before before my buddy could could get to them. Um, but we, we did manage to procure a few. I think I think we got four of them total and, and I was able to hook some people up at, up at TFCon. Not only was he showing up on Walgreens shelves while fans were on their way to TFCon DC, the figure is now available for online purchase at Walgreens.com. There's plenty more seeds where that came from. If you stop by Walgreens Big Cousin Walmart, the 35th anniversary displays are out in full force and stock of classic animation Optimus Prime and Megatron have been appearing all over the country. Also included in these displays are Sound Blaster and Deluxe Blue Streak. Each store got the exact same amount of stock, so hit your stores before they're gone. Also, if you happen to come across a white-faced animation Prime, uh, feel free to hit me up and I'd love to take it off your hands. And finally, Unfortunately, my main hotshot for bot shots, Christian, wasn't available to give us the scoop on the recently cited Series 4. 
A case of single pack Series 4 BotBots was found at a Target on the West Coast. This series is easily identifiable with the blue plastic blind pack bubble. So it's time to channel your inner Pokey Trainer and get out there to collect them all. Got a sighting you need to share with the rest of the world? Well, email us at podcast at tfylp.com and we'll make sure your sighting gets listed on this segment next week. The one that got away. Usually the one that got away is either an item that is expensive, many years old, super rare, or defies rational logic. Three out of those four descriptions fit this week's item, but it is certainly not old. What are you talking about? Bump of Chicken Sonic Blue Bumble with Chema was revealed in Japan and subsequently released days later at a concert for the band. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, Bumblebee's blue. I mean, they made a Bumblebee, but it's not quite glyph. Anyone that has been collecting event-based exclusives in Japan knows that obtaining said items can be very, very difficult. And this one was a doozy. How, how do I even get this? Because <laughs> was it, wasn't it like, don't I have to get some Japanese, like, account or something like that to get this thing? Not only were fans of Transformers vying for a brand new Bumblebee figure... Fans of Bump of Chicken also had to get it because the included Titan Master represented an actual member of the band, Chema, the bassist. I do not care about the blue Bump of Chicken Bumblebee. It does not interest me in the slightest. With a limit of two per customer and no offering to ship outside of Japan, many collectors felt Sonic Blue Bumble slipping out of their grasps. Yeah, so, um... I am not one of those types of collectors that tries to track down, like, the rarest stuff. Now, a day or two after the online sale has concluded, prices for the figure on eBay have more than tripled from the 4,000 yen it originally retailed for, and these prices are creeping upward on Japan-only Yahoo auctions as well. Dreams of adding Bump of Chicken Bumble to your collection for a sub-$100 price tag have been dashed, at least for now. After the initial dust of this release settles, it's possible that the prices could die down. But with a complete sellout of the figure reported in minutes at the shows, demand for the toy may remain high into the end of the year. So are you willing to open your wallets wider than originally planned and grab this toy? Or will it be another one that got away? Since it sounds like it's going to be a pain in the neck to actually track down, um, I'm probably not going to get it. The one that got away. You don't come fresh out of TFCon without some third-party news, and one upcoming toy revealed was so big, we're not sure it can be contained by a single segment. Move over, Unicron. The King of Clunk is about to retake his throne as the largest transforming toy of all time. We welcome Fans Toys FT40, a highly featured four-foot-tall Fortress Maximus. You heard that right, four feet. Because she sleeps above her covers, four feet above her covers. In an absolute testament to audacity, this toy will tap over any previously released figure to date and looks to be released in parts over time starting with FT40A which will consist of the two transforming head components. There isn't a ton of information available yet, but it was the figure that everyone was talking about and memeing about since the TFCon third party panel. I'm not sure if I want to get Fans Toys Fort Max or not. Knowing them, it's going to be about six years out, so we'll just have to wait and see. We don't have details or price or how many parts they're going to produce it in, so need more information. DX9's Capone is finally seeing production and is expected to ship before the end of the year. With this revelation came a slew of new photos showing the trailer and combined Menosaur skeleton made almost entirely from that trailer. You'll also receive that cool lightning bug accessory. I can't help but comment on the extremely long semi-trailer and truck mode, though. Good Lord. Next time I hear someone complain about a backpack being too big, I'm going to refer them directly to photos of the absurd length of this trailer. Other than that, the figure looks to be an incredibly faithful recreation of G1 Menastore and the Stunticons. But let's see what Rob thinks. I think DX9's uh, Motormaster actually looks pretty awesome. I'm not collecting that line. I'm going with x Transbots for my main Stunticons. So far, I think both DX9's and Fans Toys both look good. I'm waiting for one of them to do a G2 set and I'll pick up my G2 set from them. This fine real estate situated smack dab in the middle of our program is brought to you by no one. If you are interested in reaching engaged pop culture podcast listeners, then give us a ring and we can feature you and your brand in this segment. Sponsorship inquiries can be made via email at podcast at tfylp.com. We'd love to hear from you. 
And now, back to the show. Interest in Transformers customizers seems to ebb and flow over time, but I wanted to share a part of a longer interview I recently conducted with an artist that goes by the name of Air Max. He is known for creating very limited runs of G1 Transformers reimagined as G.I. Joe figures. Uh, hi, my name is Pierre Calanzaga. I'm a customizer. I guess that's how you all know me. I'm, I'm uh, known as Air Max Animated Online, and I've been under that moniker since the early 2000s. Strangely, uh, I got the idea for the, I call them the G1 Joes. They're the G.I. Joe Transformers mashup. And just a little bit of backstory to them. The idea for them was basically, for me, what if Transformers weren't actually transforming robot vehicles, but were instead characters that existed in a universe like G.I. Joe? Um, and I got the idea, honestly, I was browsing histank.com and someone had done uh, their version of a sound wave, which was much more in keeping with the original design of the sound wave character from the G1, uh, G1 Transformers. But the idea just appealed to me so much. So uh, it, it just branched out from there. Uh, I'm, I'm a mint in box, mint and package collector. So the packaging is part of the experience for me. So I didn't want to just make figures because I felt like that would be less cool than making an entire sort of presentation with the packaging, the front and the back, the, you know, the carded figure. The whole thing together makes it bigger than just a figure. I don't know um, from which camp the reaction is, is greater um, because I'm lucky enough to just have people like these. So they don't come and tell me, oh, I like G.I. Joe or I like Transformers. They just are appreciative of the piece itself. And I like to think honestly that sort of both fandoms exist on the same level. I mean, I know Transformers, you could argue, has been more successful uh, commercially, but I, G.I. Joe and Transformers, at least for me, were on par with each other back in the day. The full interview with Air Max will be made available soon in a special edition of TF Talk Weekly. Stay tuned. So many of our awesome TF Talk cast was at TFCon that I wanted to make a little audio collage of our collective experiences of the event. Hopefully, this gives you some first-hand accounts of what it was like to attend the show. And now, the sounds of TFCon. This is Mr. Starscream. It's 3.51 in the morning on Friday, October 25th. I'm in Chicago, and... My car is filled to the brim with toys, and I'm heading across the country to TFCon in Reston, Virginia. All right, well, after about 17 hours in the car, I made it, and I'm here with all the other TF Talk guys. Uh, that is Ouch My Wallet host, Rob. It's your mom and your mom's butt. See, this is not engaging content at this point. Your but this, mom's butt's engaging. I made it. I'm very happy to be here. I haven't had any sleep. already. Uh, it's Friday night. We're, just trying to, we're trying to catch up. Lucas is at Target. Anna is playing D&D. It's her birthday. That's what you do on your birthday. And uh, Christian's on his phone. Uh, Nick G, who doesn't want a commercial on my podcast, is like bitching at me right now. The bulk had sold out. The rat bat sold out. Rat bat sold out. The The pharaoh just sold out. Last pharaoh. And I got the second last pharaoh. So Uh, that's all I wanted. How how do you feel about that? About what? Getting the second to last pharaoh. I feel like I'll probably make a pretty penny when I wrap it. (laughs) So yeah, when I got Vulcan, there were only seven left, and two people had picked up. The sixth and fifth last ones and gotten in line, so they don't make too many of these things. Uh, yeah, I mean it's not they're not money makers unless you make them limited. Hello everyone, this is Rick Alvarez, the former creative manager for the Transformers and GI Joe brands at Hasbro. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go to TFCon, but I was there via Skype, where I hosted a panel focusing on the development of packaging. It's a subject that isn't really touched upon in many panels, and I walked uh, the audience through concept art to final pencils to final packaging art, both painted and digital painting. I showed off some unreleased items and how they've changed the packaging along the way to the final release, and I even showed a few uh, not-so-well-known previously unreleased items, including a Universe 2-pack of Dark Cheetor and Transmetal Waspinator in Skywarp colors. This was definitely a panel where you had to be there in order to enjoy it. 
So you were up kind of late too? Yeah, I was going to say 2.30. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, you know, 10 years ago it would have been 3.30, but yep. not bad for an old man. <laughs> so something was weird when you got back to your room last night? There was just a lot of evidence of the festivities. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was popcorn from one end of the room to the other. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, the, there were a lot of empties. I was going to say very full trash can in the morning. So I ordered, I pre -ordered. Well, you were up and at them today. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's how we do it. Wouldn't miss it. The best part about TFCon is the same thing that was the best part about BotCon or any other Transformer convention is really just hanging out with everyone. It's not really convention specific. You just need an event that will get people to show up and the more the merrier. Um, my favorite part of TFCon is just meeting up with my friends. I think that that's always my my favorite thing is is actually being able to meet those people that I've been interacting with online. Um, and so I got to meet a lot of uh, new people again this year. And, uh, you know, as I do at every TFCon. So I would say that's probably my favorite part. Yeah, this one guy, like, drove, like, 10 or 12 hours to get there to sell stuff and like didn't even have a sign up for his room missed the big night that you sell out of your room it's just like really unprepared and unprofessional well i don't know who rob would be talking about but i wouldn't want to be caught dead being that guy anyways thanks for listening to that little audio creation i hope it wasn't uh, too obnoxious for you stay tuned for our next episode where we take two interviews and splice them together into one full show it'll be a little different than we're used to and uh here's your moment of zen rack and ruin the action figure to be honest i'm a little surprised that hashtags get into this before third parties the TF Talk Network exists from the efforts of an enthusiastic collection of Transformers fans all across North America and beyond. The concept was created by Duran Land, and the main show, TFYLP, has continued for over 10 years due to his diligence and care. The cast at the TF Talk Network is always growing, so if you have a desire to participate, reach out to us via any of our social platforms or even email us at podcast at tfylp.com. You can directly support the podcast and keep us on the air by becoming a monetary supporter of TFYLP on Patreon. Donations to Patreon are used to cover expenses incurred by running the shows and are not distributed to individual staff members. If you're not already following us on YouTube, you should give it a try. Subscribe at TFYLP on YouTube and follow us anywhere podcasts are sold for free because they don't cost money, so... Isn't that a great thing? See ya. Not only were the fans of Transformers vying for a brand new Bumblebee figure, fans of Bump of Chicken also had to get it because the included Titan Master represent... I can't even say Bump of Chicken.